thank you for watching my channel today my name is Sarah and my channel is called Your True Shelf and today we are doing a haul video so I have amassed quite a collection of books since I did my last haul video um, I think my last one was a library haul and I've got quite a few since then so I will um, start straight away so so first are the books which I got from our little um, book shop no big swap uh, stand in the village where I live I got some really good finds this month and I dropped some books off there as well so the first ones that I got were two hardbacks remember these are all for free so the first one is um, this one which is um, English by Ben Fogle the story of Marmite, Queuing and Weather I really like Ben and um, I don't actually own any of his books I watch his TV programmes but um yeah, this is just um, a sort of what it, a quintessentially English book, um, just about our kind of quirks as a as a nationality, and um, I'm sure it will be like a fun and entertaining read. And then I was quite um, astonished to find this because everyone's been talking about it for a really long time, and it's a very intimidating book, but it was free and it's in absolutely perfect condition, and that is Duck's Newburyport by Lucy Elman. So I've heard nothing but good about this book. Um, I think the main reviews that I've heard about it have been from Eric at Lonesome Reader and Charlotte at Tired Mama Tries to Read. And um, I think Charlotte had to put it down because it was making her feel a bit anxious. But um, Eric really loved it. And it's massive. Um, every time I think about it, I think about Eric calling it a mother quacker. <laughs> it's really made me laugh. But it's nearly a thousand pages and it's all written in continuous prose. And so I, I, I'm kind of scared to even start it. I might have to read it in sections or something. But it's supposed to be like, it's the kind of stream of consciousness and it's supposed to be really, really awesome. So um, yeah, I've got it on my shelf for one day. And yeah, the list price on it is 25 quid. So you get it for free. It's like, wow. And then the other one which I was really pleased to find recently is one of the Women's Prize long list books which hasn't made the short list but it was one of the ones that I really wanted to read and that is Jim Patrol on the Purple Line by Deepa and Apara. This one is um, about set in India, I love books set in India and it's about um, some kids who start to go missing and some more kids who sort of form an amateur detective um, sort of agency themselves to try and work out what's happened and um, I just think it's a Radio 2 book club book as well but when I um, made my wish list on Audible this was one of the ones on there of the women's price so find, again finding it for free I was like, so chuffed so someone in um, my village where I live he has really similar reading taste or really up to date reading taste and every time I go I kind of hope they'd have left some books there um, then the next ones I got from the same place I got three Jane Austen books so I think these are the only ones I didn't have so um, these are quite nice additions as well so I've got Mansfield Park I got Northanger Abbey and I got Sense and Sensibility and I think like I say I think they're the only ones that I haven't got by her um, or the you know the main novels anyway there might be like obviously short story collections or essays or something that I haven't got but yeah so I was really pleased to find those so that's good because I really enjoy Jane Austen books I got one by um, Tessa Hadley, so this is called The London Train. I've got one, I saw Tessa Hadley speak at the UEA Literary Festival like a number of years ago and I bought one of her short story collections which she signed for me and I really enjoyed it and so now um, when I saw this one I decided that I would be cool to get this. This is about two families and they're both making journeys on a London train. The first one is about a dad who is trying to find his eldest daughter who's missing somewhere in London and he gets drawn into London life and forgets about his normal life somewhat. And the other is about a girl who is leaving her marriage and leaving London and going back to Cardiff where she inherited a place from her parents and she's going there to live. So um, sounds really good. I'm, yeah, I'm really interested in that one. And then I've got two books by Leanne Moriarty. So I've already read, let me see. I think I've read three of her books. I've read the Hypnot something about the hypnotist, the hypnotist something. Um, I've read, 
oh my god i can't remember something about a secret and i've read truly madly guilty and i really enjoyed all of them like um the hypnotist love story i think that's it and the husband's secret that's the ones um so i listened to two of them on audio and i've got one and now i've got two more here so i've got Big Little Lies. So this, I've, I'm on the second series of the TV show, <clears throat> which is brilliant. This with uh, Reese Witherspoon, Nicole Kidman, and uh, Zoe Kravitz, and which is really good. Um, and it's basically about uh, some women who are very privileged, living in this community, and um, their one of their husbands is is abusing one of the wives and it's about what happens to them in like a secret that draws them all together. That's what the TV series is about anyway, so I'm not sure if it's going to be exactly the same. I'm not even sure where it's set because that one's set in America. This is probably set in Australia. Um, yeah, so that one I am looking forward to. And then the second one is um, Nine Perfect Strangers. So this says, one luxury retreat in the middle of nowhere, ten days in which no one can leave nine strangers seeking perfection and each discovering the perfect lie so now this one so Faye picked my tbr for me this month and she picked this as one of the ones that i'm going to read this month so they were all the ones i got for free no they weren't and i found one more and i also got this this is uh, the long way down by ewan mcgregor and charlie borman so my husband and i watched um the series there was two series long way down and the long way round and we bought the DVDs of them both. And they're basically traveling the world on motorbikes. And we love the TV series. I think we'd happily rewatch it, actually. And this is the book that goes along with The Long Way Down. Um, it's got photos in, and it's um, some sections are written by you, and some sections are written by Charlie, and it's like their travel diaries. And I love travel writing, so that's cool. Um, the next one I got was a lovely surprise gift from my dear friend Hannah, who... Um, sent me this in the post this is a complete surprise um this is called um running like a girl by alexandra hemmingsley and the reason she sent me this is because i've recently taken up running so um i was inspired to do couch to 5k by lauren from lauren in the books and i'm now i've just completed week four i'm really enjoying it. i never saw myself as a runner in a million years i i liked cycling but i never saw myself as somebody who um did running and I'm really enjoying it and this is basically um so she started trying to run and the first attempt didn't go well years later she has several marathons under her belt and she agrees with her dad you run with your head as much as your legs so while this book is about running it's about so much more ambition relationships and willful boobs <laughs> but it's also about realizing what you can do if you want to so yeah that one I'm really looking forward to um, and then the next ones are all ones I bought. So some of them I got from Waterstones online because I get NHS discount and I had a voucher left from Christmas. And some of them were from the book people, which they were literally like one to two pounds per book. So the first one I got was from the book people. This is called Journeys in the Wild, The Secret Life of a Cameraman by Gavin Thurston. This was a pound. This is a naked hardback. It's beautiful here. This um, man who wrote the book was the cameraman for Planet Earth 2 and what was it, Blue Planet 2. And this is, again, sort of travel writing about what it was like to be in those um, areas, those situations, the political climate, how it was to try and get the shots they needed. And it sounds fascinating because I love nature, I love travel writing, and this kind of combines the two. So that one is right up my street. <coughs> the next one that I got from... Um, the Big People was um, A Kin by Emma Donoghue. So this was a pound, again, I think, or maybe two pounds, and another hardback. And this is about a boy who I think becomes orphaned, and his next of kin is his great uncle or his grandfather. I can't remember which. Um, great uncle. And the great uncle was about to take a trip to France. And now he's been asked to look after this this young boy who he doesn't they don't know each other at all, and um, so he decides to take the boy with him on a trip to France, and it's about their journey together. So I thought that sounded really lovely. Um, I've never read any Emma Donoghue, but I've heard lots of good things about her. And then it, and then I think the last one from the big people 
um, is this one. So this is Steve Backshaw's Expedition, um, Adventures into Undiscovered Worlds. So this book, um, so I really enjoy his nature documentaries and also the children really love his Deadly Sixties series. Um, and so this is a memoir about um, the year 2018 to 2019. My team and I set ourselves a challenge of a fistful of expedition first. It was the most ambitious project any of us had ever, had attempted. The destinations were the sum of my life's work, entries in a tatty notebook I'd been keeping since my teens. The locations were like treasure maps, annotated with an X marks the spot to somewhere special. <clears throat> None of these places could be found on Google Maps. Some of them couldn't even be seen in high resolution satellite Im imagery. Things certainly didn't go without a hitch, but the results were beyond our expectations. So that sounds fantastic. Again, like really, really my kind of book. And um, yeah. And then the last few were ones that I bought from Waterstones with my voucher. So the first one is this one. This is a really beautiful book. Uh, this is The Way Home, Tales from a Life Without Technology by Mark Boyle. This is um, Mark basically decides he's going to live off grid without any technology. So he turns his phone off and that's it. And um, he has to like make fire, make shelter, um, get his own food. Hi, sweetheart. Everything like that um, <clears throat> without any kind of assistance from the outside world. And um, yeah, um, I'm again, this is something I'm really, really interested in. Yeah, it's the deadly 60s man. And... Um, Something that I'm really deeply interested Mom, in. Okay, this is what Daddy's got. It's what Daddy's got, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you coming to sit down? Mm -hmm. Um. Then I've got three more. So I've got this is an essay collection. This is our women on the Mom. ground, Arab women reporting from the Arab world, edited by Zara Hanke. This is uh, divided into sections about what it's like to be an Arab woman living in uh, in the Arab world, funnily enough, um, and but from their perspective rather than from um, rather than from the BBC News or a male perspective or a propaganda perspective. This is this is great. Um, not only is this um, really interesting to me, but it also um, is one of the reading women challenges to. Um, to read a book by an Arab woman, so that ticks that box as well. And the last two is, um, I've got one which I bought, which is the first in a series of five, and it seems to be like really feel good, and feel good is always good in my book. I started watching the television series years ago and I don't know what happened I'm not sure how I stopped watching it because I was really enjoying it but this is um, All Creatures Great and Small by James Herriot who is a British vet who qualified in the 1930s yeah um, and so it's his diaries a memoir of what it was like to, to go to university and qualify as a vet in that time and I said it's the first of five volumes so plenty to get through if I like that one and then the last one is a book which I've been wanting to buy ever since I had her on a podcast. Okay, just a minute. This is my last book. Um, this is um, The Light Between Us by Laura Lynn Jackson. So she is a medium and it says it takes us through her struggle to come to terms with her gift and how she's used it to help others. Um, so this is, yeah, what it says on the tin really. So I heard her talk on... I can't remember what podcast it was now, um, and I was really intrigued by her her journey, her gift that she has, and how she uses it, how she's come to terms with it, and um, so yeah, I've wanted this ever since, and so I've now bought it. So that is my big old wrap up from for the month of sort of April and May. Just a second just a second um let me know if you've read any of these books or if you want to read any of them or if you've got anything on your tbr and um look forward to hearing your thoughts having a chat in the comments and i will speak to you soon bye